That shot hit him right in the middle, but he was there to corner the rebound and put it in. In the first 11 seconds of his college hockey career, Travis Roy's life changed forever. We have a BU player down in the corner. The cells in his spinal cord were massively damaged, so today he is unable to move his arms or legs. Jared has diabetes. His pancreatic islet cells no longer produce the insulin his body needs, so he has to acquire insulin artificially. Cousins Hayden and Cameron Lord were born with a genetic disorder called Tay-Sachs disease. As a result, their cells cannot produce an essential enzyme. Without it, brain cells rapidly deteriorate and die. Today, it is impossible to cure these conditions, but perhaps not forever. Stem cell technology may provide one medical intervention. Dr. Evan Snyder is a developmental neuroscientist specializing in newborn babies. He explains what embryonic stem cells are. One can go all the way back to when the sperm fertilizes the egg and you are then left with a fertilized egg, which is the beginning of the organism starts off with maybe just two cells and then four cells and then these start dividing and you're left with a ball of cells. Now somehow these cells that look identical will give rise to many different kinds of very diverse parts of the body. They are very very flexible, very very plastic and we call them stem cells and what they're called stem cells because just the way in a plant you think of the very basic stem before it starts branching out. This cell that has many possibilities learns that it needs to go to the brain to become a brain cell or it needs to go to the spinal cord and become a spinal cord cell or it needs to go to the heart and become a heart cell or go to the liver and become a liver cell some tissues continue to have stem cells after they have become specialized but those cells are less flexible than embryonic stem cells embryonic stem cells are pluripotent meaning they are capable of becoming any of the more than 200 types of specialized cells in our bodies. When tissues are diseased or damaged, stem cells can, in theory, replace or repair them. Think of stem cells as the seeds of your lawn. And you have a, a wonderful lawn, let's say, but something bad has happened to it. Well, what you do is you get new seeds, and you just reseed the lawn, you start over again. Scientists often extract stem cells from organisms prior to birth, which destroys the organism. But once stem cells are harvested, they can live on their own in the lab, copy themselves, and create a lineage or line for future research in areas like spinal cord injury. Spinal cord injury, even though it sounds simple, well, you just had this cord or this wire, you cut it, just put the wire back together again. Well, it's not that simple. Spinal cord injury is incredibly complex. So when something happens with spinal cord injury, many things go wrong simultaneously or in very short order. So we think that the stem cell first is attracted to these areas of injury. What it may be able to do is to read some of the cues and say, to the extent that certain nerve cells have died, maybe I can become that missing nerve cell. Or maybe the stem cell can simply do nothing more than provide a bridge. To pursue the bridge idea, Dr. Snyder worked with white rats with spinal cord injury. He divided them into two groups. With one group, he did nothing. For the other, he built scaffolds made out of material used for surgical sutures. We layered the stem cells on them and put that into this gap in the spinal cord of the rat and knew that that would provide enough support and also enough time for the stem cells to start communicating with the injured spinal cord and the spinal cord to start communicating with these very young, immature cells to start molding it. 
The results were encouraging. After about two and a half months, what we saw was that rats that normally should not be walking that have this devastating injury now were significantly improved. Now these rats were not normal by any means, but their quality of life, so to speak, was improved. They were now able to ambulate. Travis Matthew Roy. Dr. Snyder's findings are intriguing, but like all of today's stem cell research, the results have to be replicated in animals and in complex human trials before they can help Travis Roy, Jared, or children with Tay-Sachs disease. Adding to the difficulties of research are serious ethical questions. Pluripotent stem cells come from embryos. An embryo does not survive when stem cells are extracted, but embryonic stem cells produce the most promising stem cell lines for research. If we're going to be using a cell which was absolutely critical for putting an organism, a life together to begin with, and we're gonna harness that. Not only changing the fate of that life, um, are you actually removing the essence of life? Or somehow you, to, to get to that cell, are you preempting life? And that becomes much more controversial because now you get into people's belief as to is that right to sacrifice one life for the sake of another, even if that other are millions of lives. There's many different ways of dealing with the ethical controversies, but there's never going to be a solution that's comfortable for everybody.